we off? We're off. Right. Okay, so still Monday, 24th of October. But this will be coming out on uh, Tuesday, 25th of October, which will be the exact three-quarter mo- point mark. Moint. Combination of mark and point. Moint. Um, the exact three-quarter point of the challenge. Exact three, po- qu- three quarters of 366 is actually 274.5. And I can't really do half a measure. So I will round it up to 275, which will be this one. And I have got something... I'm hoping it tastes as special as the surrounding story and myth about this particular distillery. So it is this here, um, which was very, very kindly donated by the fantastic Tobias von Neubrunner, who um, has provided me with some amazing samples um, of some absolutely fantastic whiskies as well. And I've been extremely lucky throughout this challenge to come across some whiskies which are very very rare indeed and that was never the point of the challenge the point was to try and do as many different distilleries as i could and i wasn't looking to get ultra rare bottlings and ultra expensive bottlings it was more to try and find out what like the core of each separate distillery and brand around the world was on a day-to-day basis but because of the generosity of the whiskey community and the whiskey community is amazing i have met and Um, communicated with just unbelievably friendly, passionate, kind, generous people from around the world, including Tobias, who um, lives in Luxembourg. And um, they have sent me um, samples of whiskies that, uh, you know, distilleries long gone, destroyed, no more, really, really hard to get hold of, you know, hundreds of pounds, in some cases, even thousands of pounds a bottle. And they've sent me a 25, 30 mil measure for me to do a review on, um, which is just incredibly generous. And, and this is one of those, you know, this this is up there with uh, Ladyburn and, and Milburn and uh, Glenvor and uh, these distilleries that are closed down. Likewise, um, Karuizawa, um, I think it's Karuizawa, uh, is a distillery that um, closed down in 2011. No, 2001, sorry. Um, it was mothballed in 2001, and uh, it's, it, it's become almost legendary within Japanese whiskey circles. The distillery was here um, in a place called Miyota, and it opened in 19, 1955, and they actually commenced production in 1956. Um, it's kind of south slightly southeast of Nagano uh, which I'm sure is where they had a Winter Olympics once um, and it's it's very near a, a still active volcano called Mount Asama uh, which apparently last erupted in 2004 but is fairly regular when it erupts um, it's very much a tourist attraction it's a very beautiful part of Japan indeed and it was a very small distillery um, in, it was actually the smallest in Japan at the time they had four pot stills um, but it was it was a, a small distillery with very very big ambitions. So they were importing um, Golden Promise barley from Scotland. Now Golden Prom, it's my dog dreaming. Um, Golden Promise, oi, I don't know who's what he's chasing. Um, Golden Promise barley was actually um, is used by I think it's like Callan is the um, distillery that kind of swear by it. But it's a very very highly regarded um, uh, type of barley which apparently produces very, very flavoursome spirit. Um, They were um, using um, ex-sherry casks imported directly from Spain. It was small batches. It was very careful. It was kind of like, you know, the proper craft distillery. This, you know, real craft care time taken. And it became extremely highly regarded. Now, it was owned by a company called the Mercian Company, who were bought out by Kirin, um, who you've probably heard of for Kirin Beer. And... Um, it essentially it became an unviable business because they were doing things properly and Kirin didn't see the long term um, success in it. Japanese whiskey in sort of the, the 80s, 90s and, and 2000s up, up to really only kind of the last probably 10 years or so Japanese whiskey wasn't massively popular overseas it was, it was you know it was Big in Japan, which is a song by somebody who I can't remember, um, but it was it wasn't massively popular as it is now. And, and Karuzara basically 
the, the, Kieran kind of, you know, right, they bit the bullet and went, look, this isn't working for us. We're, we're going to mothball it. Before, if they'd have hung on maybe five years, maybe another 10 years, they would have reaped the benefits because it was the people that knew about Karoo's Zara really, really rated it and it was really highly regarded. Now, it was mothballed. The land has now been sold. In 2011, a UK-based company called Number One Drinks basically bought the entire remaining stock of Karoo Zara. And um, the prices of it are going through the bloody roof. It is one of those, it's, it's like proper, proper cult status. You know, this is, if you can find it, you are paying through the nose for it. And then it's a case of, right, are you paying through the nose for it because other people are wanting it rather than the quality of the whiskey itself? This particular one, um, which was donated by Tobias, is called um, Gloria Ocean. Now, Ocean was actually um, sort of a subsidiary of um, Kirin itself, and they were kind of like a, a, a brand name for various releases of the entire company. So, um, Caruza is this distillery. Ocean is almost like a brand name. Um, Gloria, I don't know, but this is what the bottle looks like, and it is actually in the shape of a ship. So I don't know whether Gloria is actually the name of the ship that it's based on. It's a beautiful bottle. It really is. Now, Tobias has just told me that he paid, um, I think it was, I think, 80 euros. He did actually, it, this is literally in the last half an hour, so I'll, I'll bring it up um, because I wanted to double check what bottle he'd, um, he'd actually sent me because there was a few of them on there. Um, so he paid... 80 euros for it plus 24 euros for shipping now he didn't say when but um in a whiskey auction site in march of this year the very same decanter sold for 400 quid at auction and again this is the thing with Karui Zara is is people want it people have heard of it and they want it and they will pay through the nose for it so this is probably i don't know 20 quids worth of whiskey just in that alone so as I say, I'm extremely grateful to Tobias for sending it to me. I'm extremely lucky to have this in my possession. And I'm hoping it is, that's if I can open it. I'm hoping, Jesus, Tobias, what did you do this with super glue? There we go. Um, that the whiskey lives up to the reputation that it already has. Um, they were uh, maturing it in cherry casks, so I'm hoping that it's going to be... I'm hoping this is more of a Japanese whiskey. One thing I have found, and I'm not going to really go... I've, I've got one more Japanese to do after this, which is the Hakushu, um, which is the, the other Suntory distillery um, to Yamazaki. And I'll do a bit more of an overview on Japanese whiskey generally before I then move into the quarterly review because I found with Japanese that there have been... It, it's either very very Japanese in style and it has its own character and it has a, a kind of Japanese feel to it or it's just a bit of a disappointment and it's actually kind of a bit overpriced and a bit overrated and I think that's where we are with the market is there are certain Japanese whiskies that are creating this this myth about Japanese whiskey generally that it's incredibly high quality and it's absolutely fantastic stuff and you're going to have to pay through the nose for it because they don't release a lot of it and it's in demand and yet there's another part of it where it's actually overpriced and overrated and you're paying for the fact that it's just from Japan rather than the quality of the whiskey itself. So, fingers crossed, this is in the former camp. 43% this is as well. And let's see how we go. Now, one thing I must point out as well, there's a very, very, and I've literally only just discovered this. This is like when I was doing American whiskies and I found Scoo's Recent Eats about three quarters of the way through that section of American whiskey and it was the more, most information you would ever want to know about American distilleries and whiskies. There is another blog called, I think it's nonjato, N-O-N-J-A-T-T-O dot com um, and it's the equivalent of Japanese whiskies. It's absolutely fantastic and one of the blogs talks about um, Ocean as a brand and it seems to be in the 70s and 80s that they had a kind of thing for ladies who weren't wearing an awful lot. And he's got pictures of like promotional items where it's basically a woman starkers with a bottle of whiskey next to her. And it's kind of like, boobs, buy whiskey. Hey, look, boobs, buy whiskey. So really classy. Um, certainly not as classy as the bottle that, that this came into. So coloration. 
is that a word? Coloration? Color. Um, really nice, almost like a golden syrup color. It really, not as thick obviously, but the color of golden syrup. Really, really nice color on that. Ooh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. What is that? There's a sharpness to it. But it's really hard. To, it's kind of like, it's like orange peel, but it's not quite acetone. And it's not mint, but it's something really, really fresh. It's not citrus. It's kind of a combination of all of them. It's really, really weird. It's like a, there's a, there's a real gentle kind of underlying delicacy to it. But on the top of that, there's this, this weird kind of, and it's pleasant, don't get me wrong, it's weird in a good way. It's just really hard to kind of pinpoint what that is. Is it sort of citrus and acetone and orange peel and really, really clean washing? Like really cl clean cotton. But it's so delicate. It really is delicate. You've got to take a good sniff of it. It certainly doesn't nose like it's 43%. Oh, it's nutty. Oh, God, is it nutty. It starts off, it starts off a little bit sharp then turns into orange peel comes through. And now all I'm getting on the finish is Brazil nuts. That really kind of um, woody, earthy nuttiness of a Brazil nut. But it, it transforms halfway through the palate. It starts off really zingy. And like I say, it's kind of like orange juice and, and other citrus, almost a little bit of lime, only just a slight touch. Then it kind of turns malty, and then all of a sudden it kind of mutates. It's a bit like, like the T1000 in T2. It starts off as one thing and then kind of like molds into this really nuttiness. And it's like, oh, it's slightly nutty. Oh, it's kind of like hazelnuts. Oh, no, it's Brazil nuts. Oh, no, it's Brazil nuts. It's big style Brazil nuts. And on the finish, it's kind of mouth-watering, but it's definite nuttiness. There's a slight smokiness to it as well. I think that's kind of, that's accentuating that, that dark nuttiness that's there. But there is a real, a real soft, very, very subtle touch of smoke. And it's a bonfire smokiness. It's not, it's not medicinal. This is definite kind of bonfire, slightly ashy. But it's still delicate. It's not, it's not full on, it's not powerful, it's not rich, it's just dancing around on your tongue and warming and then becomes nutty. It, it would be brilliant at Christmas. Really would be fantastic at Christmas if it you know was cheaper than 400 quid bottle. But something really special to open at Christmas after dinner, actually that would probably do the trick. Very, very unusual. Not like any other Japanese I've had so far. I've not had many, admittedly. There are only, what, 12 of them and I've still got the Hakushi to go. But it's it's a very distinctive whiskey, this particular one. There is a sort of syrupiness, but to start with, there is a slight, a very slight hint of golden syrup and maltiness and toffee, but then it becomes slightly smoky and slightly nutty. We're not quite talking chestnuts roasting on an open fire, but not far off, kind of getting that sort of smoky nuttiness in there. That's a really good whiskey, really good, really unusual. I'm not a big fan of, of nutty flavors generally, but that works, that works really well. And like I say, as a kind of Christmas whiskey, um, kind of post Christmas dinner or you know a little bit later on while you're watching whatever crappy Bond films on TV at 10 o'clock at night and everybody's feeling a bit sleepy and you want something really nice just before you go to bed that would definitely do the trick very 
distinct and unusual, but very nice indeed. And I am very, very privileged to drink this. Now, I'm not saying that if you find a bottle of Karuizawa, it's going to taste like that. My guess is that there are a lot of different expressions out there of, of various, probably various qualities. This is good. Is it 400 quid's worth? No. Um, even with that fantastic looking ship shaped bottle. Um, but is it worth the 80 euros that Tobias paid? I think probably actually he got a decent price considering it's a distillery that's long gone. Um, and I think the whole package and everything that surrounds it, I think for that price, he's actually done very, very well indeed. 400 quid, different matter entirely. Because I've got to try and look at it as the whiskey inside the bottle rather than the demand for it that's driving the prices upwards. But that, that's good. That's good. That is a very, very pleasant way to finish off another quarter of the challenge. We're nearly there. We're not that far off. Um, another, was it 93, I think, uh, per quarter um, to go. Um, although it's two, so I could do the maths, but I'm too tired. Um, but yes, there's not a lot left to go. We're getting there. We're nearly at the end of Japanese. Like I say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more. Normally I would do a quarterly review after a quarter, obviously. But I have one more Japanese left, so what I want to do is I want to include that before I do the quarterly review, just so I can do Japanese as a separate section, do my favourite Japanese as well as favourite X, Y, and Z, because I can't even remember that far back as to what I did after the halfway point. But Tobias, thank you very, very much for that. I am I count myself extremely lucky to have met you. Uh, and encountered you and to have you send me some absolutely fantastic drams of which that was one um, so I shall see you at the next one cheers <laughs>